This is a short version of the 30-minute webinar Contracting Power in Brazil, Challenging Times. I am Rafael Hertzberg, Energy Consultant based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The webinar's agenda covered what's changing in the power markets in Brazil, what are the new challenges, how to go for well-informed decisions, and tools to evaluate the available options. This graph shows the marginal cost of operations, and by that I mean the cost to dispatch one additional megawatt hour with the existing power generation infrastructure in Brazil. And this value is published on a weekly basis by the independent system operator known in Brazil by the by ONS, Operador Nacional do Sistema. Well, if we look at what happened in the, these past 15 years, what we can see here is basically two different time frames. The first one uh, is when you see very well behaved power prices. The green dotted line shows that the average, average price was somewhere around 100 reais per megawatt hour, or roughly speaking, $30 per megawatt hour. And then we have another time frame, which started somewhere sometime uh, in 2012, where you can see a, a higher average. So the new average is around 400 reais per megawatt hour, or four times the green dotted line. But most importantly, you see a huge volatility. What is then happening? We can tackle the answer by first studying the power matrix in Brazil. Most of it is hydro, about 77%, and I mean uh, this month of March 2018, and we have to take into account that we are basically uh, now in the rainy season, so we have lots of water as compared to the dry season, and so the independent system operator dispatches as much as possible hydropower plants. And this can be shown here, 77% hydro, 7% wind, and the balance of 16% is thermal. And by that, we, we can say coal, natural gas driven combined cycle power plants, and of course, nuclear as well. Lots of talks have been uh, heard in Brazil about solar, and it's climbing very fast, but still is a very small fraction of the country's power matrix. What are price references with respect to our power matrix? Now, let's see what happens. 84% is renewable, remember 77% hydro and 7% wind. And if we take into account that the average power cost out of renewable power plants is about 200 reais per megawatt hour, it means 168 reais per megawatt hour just for renewable. Thermal power plants well, they are very expensive in Brazil, roughly speaking about 1,500 reais per megawatt hour, and they account for 16% of our matrix. It means 240 reais per megawatt hour. And so, if we combine renewable and thermal, we end up with 400 reais per megawatt hour, which is basically the same number that appeared in the average power prices, the red dotted line in the first slide uh, where it was shown the marginal cost of operations. Since hydro plays such an important role in Brazil's power matrix, it's 
very important also to understand what's going on with our hydro reservoirs. We can tell that three electrogeographical regions, north, south, and northeast, they represent a fairly small amount of the total um, water stored in our reservoirs. And what we can see here is that uh, there are no very important differences along these years. And of course, we have to take into account that we have rainy seasons and dry seasons. That's why we have uh, variations. But most importantly, we have to take into account what's happening with the reservoirs in the southeast area of Brazil, where the most important ones are based. About 70% of all the water that is stored for our hydropower plants are in the southeast region. So, and this is where we can see a very dramatic situation because along these seven years, what we see is a dramatic reduction in the water stored. Of course, we can see variations because we have rainy season and dry season, but otherwise, the red dotted line indicates that we are uh, storing less and less water every year. And this is very important because it stresses the hydropower supply of the country. On the other hand, if we look at what happened since 2010, we can see uh, an increasing demand year after year with the exception of the past two or three years when we had a major recession in, in Brazil. But otherwise, we are always increasing the power consumption. And for 2018, the independent system operator is predicting an important increase in the power consumption. And so this is very important because we have in one hand a decrease in the water storage and on the other hand we have an increase in the power demand. So let me emphasize here a little bit about volatility of uh, power costs. The blue shaded area is shown here in detail and what we can see here is that um, we have a, an extremely high volatility in power costs. The proposed strategy is quite simple. Basically, the idea is locking new power deals for future delivery when we have identified that we are um, getting very low marginal cost of operations. And why is that? Because when that happens, power traders have a tendency to come up with lower power prices for future delivery, at least in Brazil. The challenge then is how to identify an opportunity to close power prices for future delivery. Of course, if you look at the past, it's very easy to see very clearly when power prices were low. But the challenge now is making a decision based on current power prices and evaluating if right now we are seeing low prices or high prices. In order to check that, I have developed basically a comparison of three very important parameters. The marginal cost of operations as published by the independent system operator, which is a short-term price. I like to calculate a technical long-term price, which I call marginal cost of expansion, which is basically a theoretical calculation 
which takes into account the, the country's predicted um, matrix, and by that I mean considering the renewable and the thermal mix, the investment in the expansion, and by that I mean specifically hydropower plants, thermal power plants, and uh, even other sources if the independent system operator is considering a change in the, uh, made in the country's matrix. And of course, the amortization term, which usually I consider 20 years because it's a capital intensive sector and usually investors consider tw a 20 year time frame. And then the last very important aspect is the interest rate, specifically considering the country's risk, because it's a different matter if the investor is going for um, a power plant in North America, Europe, or if it's going uh, to Brazil. So combining those four most important aspects, we are able to calculate this marginal cost of expansion, which is the cost to deliver one megawatt hour out of to be built plants, considering the predicted power matrix of the country. And the last parameter is, of course, the market price offered by the power traders. Plain and simply put, the opportunity is there if the power prices offered by the power traders are consistently below the marginal cost of expansion. And then you are in a position to lock long-term power deals. In my professional experience, I discovered that perhaps it might make a lot of sense not to go for one specific deal, but potentially come up with a number of partial deals so that you develop a portfolio of deals and reduce your exposure to risks. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. And here goes my contact information. I am looking forward to hearing from you.